Dear students, hope we have enjoyed the last few lectures on surface energy. This is lecture number 8 and we are going to continue our discussion on the surface energy related aspects. So, first let me tell you that we have been discussing about very interesting things about surface energy of nanomaterials and their properties, right. Let last lecture few important aspects which I have discussed is one is the lattice parameter, how it is dependent on the surface energy and the size of the particles. Then I talked about very interesting concept called magic numbers, right. How unique numbers like 13, 55, 147, 306, 561 numbers appear as the number of atoms sitting on the cluster for the FCC nanoparticles. I hope you have understood it. It is very difficult concept, but important to know the origin of these magic numbers. Then I talked about vapor pressure, how the vapor pressure of different nanoparticles are significantly dependent on the surface energy as well as the particle size. Obviously, particle size and surface energy are related, right. So, these are all uh, aspects which I discuss. So, today again I am going to have some recap on the things and then I will go forward with the something new, right. So, one of the things we are going to recap first is the lattice parameter, right. Lattice parameter as we know is a very important characteristics of any crystalline material and we metallurgists or material scientists mostly deal with metals and ceramics where cubic and hexagonal structures are predominant and uh, their lattice parameters are basically kind of uh, dependent on what kind of crystal system it is in FCC, BCC or simple cubic there is only one lattice parameter. On the other hand hexagonal crystal structure there are two lattice parameter A and C, C is the vertical one, A is the horizontal one as you know, right. So, they are dependent on the size and the surface energy and uh, in fact they are related to that with the relationships I have discussed about it, okay delta A by A is inverse is proportional to the size and directly proportional to gamma, right that we have discussed, right delta A by A is equal to gamma by D into 4 K by 3, okay. I remember that. So, uh, now the question is K is the compressibility, right and uh, therefore, and in case of few of experimental basis lattice parameter do undergo decrease as a size decreases so significantly that is parameter can be decreased quite a bit about 1 Armstrong for pure aluminum when the particle size goes down to 6 or 7 nanometers. That is something which is very very high when you talk about lattice parameter decreasing such a high level. Well, then I talked about something called magic numbers and in magic numbers the basic aspect is the relationship between the surface atoms by the bulk atoms, how many atoms are sitting in the surface versus bulk and first important aspect is the spherical cluster approximation which you dealt with. If you assume a spherical nanoparticle then you can calculate what is the fraction of the atom sitting on the surface uh, for the particular diameter of the atom as well as the uh, you know number density, right. So, that is is done here, you can see that F s the fraction of the surface atoms to the total number of atoms is proportional to n to the power minus one third, where n a is the number of atoms sitting in the spherical cluster, correct. That is something which is mathematically derived in the last lecture and you probably have understood it, right. In case you have not understood it, please do yourself, this is a very easy thing to do in for spherical cluster. Okay, that's basically comes from this uh, number of atoms or the number of sitting on the surface uh, area divided by the surface divided by the cross sectional area of the atom, right? 
sc by a as you can see this 4 pi r c square that is equal to this parameter divided by pi a square the surface that is the area of the atom pi r a is the radius of the atom we are assuming several things here we are assuming the spherical cluster hard sphere model of atoms and the spherical class spherical cluster is packed such nicely that the speed space is very minimal we are ignoring even the speed space okay that is not 100 percent correct. So, by doing that we can actually arrive certain formulae, but then you know most of the crystals does not form spherical type of structures they have a different shape other than sphere and which is dictated by their underlying crystal structure. So, the crystal structure actually affect significantly the shape or the in fact the number of surface atoms or the fraction of the surface atoms. That is obvious because if you consider an FCC structure you know that this is the structure of FCC which is shown on your screen as you see here there is a central atom if I put it around which there are 12 FCC atoms. So, that is a 13 atom cluster A 13 okay, in which one of the atom is a bulk atom is all bond satisfied but other 12 atoms are surface atoms. Right. So, that is our first cluster, first layer consisting of 12 atoms if you consider FCC lattice, correct. So, you can now put around the second clusters, if you do that you need about 22, you need about 55 atoms. So, that means in the second layer you will have about 40 view atoms, right, that is possible. But you know FCC crystals does not form cuboid or cubic structure they actually form what is known as a cuboctadal structure it is a 14 phase solid. Okay. This is what is shown here in fact some of these we will discuss today. This cuboctadal cluster or the things actually is what is predominantly observed because that is the surface energy minimized structure and if you keep on adding those kind of class shape of layer of atoms then you grow these clusters from single layer to double layer to triple layer to five layer structures and in that case your peculiar numbers come into picture 13, 55, 147, 308, 308, 308, 5, 6 to 1 and they are called magic numbers. These numbers are called magic numbers. This is very important concept it is present in chemistry, physics, even for electronic structure also, right. And that is something to explain it I told you how it is possible. If you consider a single layer that is one atom in the pink ball or the central ball here, okay, the yellow color ball is surrounded by six pink color atoms and then you can put on the top three layer, three atoms on the bottom three atoms that is from FCC structure ABC. So, you have a single 1 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 that is 13 balls. So, it is the first closest cell cluster, it is most stable because at least one atom is full compensation of the nearest neighbor. One atom is the bulk atom rest is. So, if you keep on adding one one mono layers pattern around the previous core, we will get a series of magic numbers that is what I discussed about it and this you should understand and remember very well. So, in a cube octal shape at crystals you have one 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 facets. 1 1 O facets and 1 O facets, right. So, that is how actually the configuration is formed, but why this cuboctal kind of shapes form at all? That is because of surface energy minimization, okay, which we are going to discuss today. Well, uh, so let us start with that. And then I talked about vapor pressure effect. Vapor pressure is dependent on the size for the gold and zinc I have shown as the particle size decreases vapor pressure ratio. P by P infinity increases very rapidly goes up to about 50 to 100 times. Okay, that is the very important aspects of the thing. Well, let us not start the lectures today that is almost about 10 minutes or 8 minutes to discuss. Now, as the material goes smaller and smaller the collective surface area becomes larger and larger or the surface the volume de increases right. So, it is this collective surface area what dictates the total surface energy. When you multiply the specific surface energy of the collective surface area, 
you get total surplus energy. That's why it actually is important, having important role in dictating the shape of the nanoparticles. Okay, you may be thinking how. Let us discuss a little bit about it. You know, crystals have many shapes. You can have initial crystals have a cuboid shapes. The facets of the initial crystals is bounded by one 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 old type of surfaces. You can have octahedron. Okay, there are few crystals which form zinc sulfide actually. All this forms octahedron type of things. Octahedron is nothing but a eight equilateral triangles connected together. You can have rhombic dodecahedron. Okay, you can have even other kind of structures possible. Okay, so. Why this kind of things forms? Something is written at the bottom of each figure. For the cubic, the surface energy of one oh no one zero zero surfaces is the list. That's why it forms a cuboid. In octahedron, one 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 facets are the least surface energy. That's why all the surfaces are bound by one one one. In the rhombic octahedron, it's one one zero surfaces has the least energy. On the other hand, if you have complex shapes like you, many many of them are shown at the bottom. Okay, I don't remember all of the steps, but for each of these surface energies, we will obey such a kind of rules and regulations. These are all nicely documented. Now, why it happens so? That's something which bugs everyone, right? Well, to understand that, we should discuss about something known as Ulf constructions. Long back in 1901, Ulf actually first time discussed about this, and that's why it is known by Ulf constructions. Okay. That's something which you should know. Okay, uh, before I discuss about it, let us talk about how this aspect is important for a cubic crystal. Well, you know, in a cubic crystal, there are three important planes. First one is 1O or 2O. Okay, here it is written 2O because to make a similarity, but let's consider it's 1O. And then you have 11O, O corresponding to 0 actually in my language, please remember that. Basically, it helps you to remember, that's why. So, 100 to 110 and 111 planes. And if you have forgotten, let me again draw and show you, so that you remember it. Okay, this is the cubic crystal. I am drawing it a little bit at an angle, so that you can see it nicely. So, this is x axis. Okay, let us erase it out, does not look good. x, y, and z, right. So, for me, 1, 1, 1 plane is the 1, 1, zero, sorry, 1, zero, 0 plane is this, right. Now, I use different color to use to make the other planes. So, I am making 1, 1, 0 plane, which is this, sorry, right. That's my one one zero plane, right? You must know the Miller indices concept. Okay, now I'll use another color to paint one 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 plane. Right, that's my one 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 plane. Now you have the corresponding FCC crystal structure with atoms there. So if you look at the atomic configuration on one 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 plane, this is basically close pack, one atom surrounded by six atoms. But if you look at one one zero plane, that is my this plane, so you can see there are four atoms, this four atom and there is a central, that is a face center atom, okay. That is obvious, so which is this or this, that is this one, right, correct. So, there are two atoms, so it will sit on each other because we are taking a position, right. So, that is nothing but this atom and there are four atoms like this, correct and this there are two atoms here, that is what I am drawing a dot and a circle. Then on the other hand, this one O O facets is this like this, right. You can see that there are one, two, three, four atoms and then 
there is a central atom, right, which is missing here, not shown. So therefore, it will be like this, correct? Okay, or wrong? This is wrong, basically. There will be no such atom situating there. It will be like this. Okay, now let's consider these kind of structures. So this is the atomic configurations of the three closest pack or three planes actually. I will not take closest pack in a physical cell 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 0, 0 and 2, 2, 0. Okay. So now as you can clearly see if these are my surfaces suppose. Suppose 1, 1, 1 is my surface. Let us consider for the sake of understanding. So you can see that for each atom three bonds are missing. How many you may think how? Obviously, if I consider this atom, if I consider this atom, central atom, it is bonded with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, at the bottom also is bonded with 3 and FCC has a coordination number of 12. So that means how many atoms are missing? Three, right? Three atoms are missing. Three top atoms are missing. So three bonds are missing. Okay. Am I clear for each atom? So as you know very clearly, right? If the bond energy is epsilon, so that's basically three epsilon by two. Now if I one mole, I can write down N A. That's my surface energy of one 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 facet. What about this? If you clearly see each atom is having four nearest neighbors. But in FCC unit cells there will be more required because Z is twelve. So that obviously then surface energy, number of bonds broken, everything and so higher. Same thing is true for these atoms also. Correct. So that's why gamma one 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 is list, and this is how this relationship holds true in a cubic structure. So depending on the crystallographic plane, surface energies are going to be varying. This is a well-known fact. Okay. In fact, surface energies are anisotropic. That means surface energy of these planes are not same. Had it been same, we could have told this is told that this is isotropic. But because it is, they are not same, this is a case of anisotropic surface energy. Correct? So, always you define anisotropy things like okay, a parameter kind of this. ratio between surface energy of 1, 1, 1 plane by 1, 0, 0 plane. That is obviously less than 1, it is a fraction. Because 1, 1, 1 plane is the least surface energy uh, plane having least surface energy then compared to 1, O plane. So upon knowing these facts, so that means where interpersonal energy is in a crystalline structure is a function of its orientation of the plane. So how can we put it into picture? Well, let us suppose that uh, this is a plane which is at an angle theta with respect to the one of the closest black planes. You are not able to understand. Surfaces will be like this, right? So I am talking about this surface. Let us suppose this surface is making an angle theta, that is what is shown there, theta with respect to one of the closest back plane. Closest back can, can, can be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 bar 1, so many there are planes are there, 1, 1 type, right. So now if you look at, if you want to measure the surface energies of this two dimensional plane, what you need to know is the number of broken bonds. So what is the number of broken bonds on this horizontal thing? That is cos theta by A. A is the spacing between the two planes. And what is the number of broken bonds on the horizontal particle things? 
see you are my you may be thinking what is horizontal vertical why sir is talking like this okay horizontal things are this okay which are lying like that and vertical things are this right so this is i'm talking about sine is this cos is this right because this is the length so with respect to this length sine cos you can easily understand right sin is this length divided by this length cross is this length divided by this length so finally this becomes a common length so therefore this is equal to sin mod theta by a number of broken bonds will be broken so you can add them together it's become u by 2a cos theta plus sin mod sin mod theta where a is u is the number of bonds is the bond energy is basically so now because it is orientation dependent it is theta dependent so i can plot surface energy correct and this will be looking like this surface energy will be small or minimum for the closest packed plane so you have you have drawn these things as a function of theta which is nothing but angle this plane is making with one of the closest packed plane so if that is my reference point surface energy will minimum on the closest packed plane and slowly it will increase and taper off this is what has been observed this is what has been measured this has been calculated so two things you could connect right first is that crystallographic planes of fcc crystal have different number of broken bond per unit area so they have different surface energies different value of gamma here gamma is the specific surface energy per unit area right we are talking about that please remember this i should not come again and again on the same concept and this is now connected with a generalized concept why you will be talking about only fcc or something it can be true for any crystalline structures generalized concept it would be it will look like this i'm sorry we are not discussing about 3d because the equation looks little bit complex and explaining that may take more time and you may need to study also more so 2d is very easy to understand now do this very simple thing let us suppose we make us make a 2d things as you know in a cubic crystals direction and planes are perpendicular to each other so let us suppose this is my 1 o direction and this is my 0 1 0 direction right so this will be my 0 1 1 0 direction and uh, and this will be 1 1 0 0 direction i think i should draw it much better way so that you don't forget right okay so now knowing this what is my 1 1 o direction that basically these are the two vectors 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 so addition of that so that will be lying at a 45 degree am i clear so what is then 1 1 1, 1 direction where it will lie okay so that's between between this and the z axis because this axis is my 0 0 1 direction this one right this is my perpendicular this is my 0 1 1 0 directions so this will lie somewhere there vertically this plus this so if i project it it will be lying here not clear well that's not difficult
Why it is not difficult? Because my zero one direction is vertical with respect to this plane of the screen. So if I want to have one 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 direction, so I must have a vector addition of one one zero and zero zero one. So this vector addition will lie on the vertical plane. So I am projecting here, right? That's all. So now this is my one quadrant. Quadrant. You can do other quadrant also. Easily you can do yourself. I think it is. You should better do that. So now I know the surface energy is maximum along this direction. Minimum along this direction, like one one one. And intermediately it will be along one one zero, right? You know that gamma one 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 is less than gamma one one zero, less than gamma one zero zero. So I do it. So I make a plot like that, right? So I can do it for everything. I can do it here also. Right. So that's my gamma envelope on a two D for an FCC crystal. This is gamma envelope. What does it indicate? It shows how gamma is varying as a function of orientation, theta, and this is known. This is known to us. Long back, this is known to us. Correct. It is something like this. It will look like. Okay. So even you can do better on this side. So this is what is my gamma envelope. This is what is my gamma envelope. What I can do? Okay, to in order to create the structure inside it, what is done is very simple. That is what is known as Ull's construction. So now what is done? So this is one such plot in UD. Okay, what I've drawn. This is even better way of drawn. Okay, these are your one one. One over directions. Okay, this one, this one. So to have a Wolf construction, what you do is very simple. You draw a vector. This is a vector. Suppose lie down at a point P. This is O. So O P is a vector. And now O P is telling me one of the direction crystallography. It can be any directions, any odd direction. Obviously. If you drew this way, this is this direction. Suppose this is O A. O A is for me is one O direction, right? For O P is in general direction, which is H K L. H K L can be anything. H K L is H K L. Are each of these are actually Miller indices. So now what I do, I am the magnitude of this vector. Is basically gamma H K L. As cubic crystal planes and, and directions are normal, so this is gamma H K L plane only. Okay. So now then what I do? Then I take a tangent at the point P on this curve. Right? Okay. I can do that. You can see that. So if I do that. And if I do for every points on this curve like that, I draw another for normal, another normal. Sorry, another normal here. 
another one here, another one there, like this, and you can do this, like that, okay, or let me use a different show, color, that is what is done in the next, this normals. Sorry, it's not tangent, normal, okay? You are drawing a normal at this point with respect to this vector. If this is the vector, you are drawing a normal. So many normals are drawn. Now, if you connect them, what is the thing you get is the equilibrium shape. And this is, is known as a Wolf construction. This is very easy, right? This is not difficult to do. Provided you know the surface energy as a function of theta or orientation. The moment you know that, then it is very easy to do. It is not difficult at all. So, that means first and foremost thing is this aspect. Now, once you do that, then you can get this equilibrium steps. The steps which will be having the lowest minimum. Remember, the conditions which are using it doing that is this. That means you are minimizing this summation A i gamma i, where A is a surface area, gamma is a surface, specific surface energy. So, total surface energy of the system is minimized the moment you do this construction. This can be mathematically proved, theoretic, sorry, can be proved by even construction wise. But let us not wait into all these difficulties, just try to understand what is the Wolf construction, how this construction can give you such a kind of uh, important equilibrium shape of a crystal, correct. This again shown here very nicely, what you can see here is that this outer envelope, the curved one is basically the surface energy anisotropic, sorry surface energy plot as function of theta, correct. Now, if I draw one of these vectors from this ox origin to this, and this vector is corresponding to the atomic or the planar direction, right. And then I take a normal to that thing on that point A, correct. You can see that this is a normal drawn, the dotted line is a normal drawn, that is what is known as Wolf plane. I am sorry, I am making all this mistake on Wolf, okay. I should correct it, okay. Here I made a mistake, I am sorry about it. This should be. Okay, please correct it. That's what is done. So you can do it, draw it here for any such plane. Suppose if I draw it here at this point, then I draw a normal. This is my OB. You can draw it anywhere. You can draw it here. You can draw a normal. This is OC like that. Then the inner envelope which you join is basically is the equilibrium shape. You can clearly see this is in cube octal shape lambda in 2D. Correct? And uh, equilibrium shapes in the crystal is showing 1 O okay, or 1 1 hexagonal faces. So that is the thing actually. You can see that 1 1 1 facets, these are 1 1 1 facets and 1 O facets. There is no 1, 1, O facets. 1, 1, O is this direction, so there is no facet perpendicular to that. So, this has only two facets. Okay, I hope it is clearly understood to you. We can discuss further. So, shape from nano crystal is, I uh, see some people use Ulf, but basically in German terms it is Ulf. Okay, this is what it is, but people write it Ulf. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's talk about that. Uh, exactly the same thing shown here. Even you have arbitrarily surface energy, and then you can draw these normals and do this. I'm doing it again. This is a cuboctal shape. So this is the reason why FCC crystals or FCC structures they show such a kind of a cuboctal shapes. Again, I'm showing you some arbitrary shapes. 
uh, you can see here it's it's very peculiar shape actually okay here you have one one o facets and one 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 facets right so this is the surface energy envelope and each one is shown by such a kind of nice points you see here this this points are shown so see you can generate the shapes right if you know this it is not difficult at all for you now okay so uh, i'll just go back and to my this crystallographic shapes here so all these shapes are basically because of this aspect because of the old construction so when you have different kinds of uh, surface energy comes into picture comes into play this kind of shapes will be generated it's a cubic octahedron or a cubic dot octahedron or such a kind of peculiar shapes only when these conditions will be satisfied so therefore actually in the real world uh different shapes form because of minimization of the surface energy i just discussed about it and this is manifested uh, by the old construction the manifestation of the old construction so old original paper came in 19 no almost like 120 years ago this is a classic paper so that's basically what that shows how we can understand the shape evolution of the crystals remember in 1901 people even didn't know nano crystals but people have seen natural crystals different kinds of natural crystal available in the real world so those natural crystals are actually have different shapes like ice crystals or maybe diamonds or some other crystals from there people are intrigued by the shapes and other things and that's so actually this concepts of this shape business came into picture well so that's something which you need to understand very well uh, so on the basis of this calculated surface energy equilibrium crystal shapes can be created okay and uh, mostly cubic slabs such as structures have a cuboidal shapes always observed in the real life and that's something which should you should, should uh, always remember that okay so i think uh, with this i'll stop the today's lecture because this is a big concept which i thought i should discuss with you in detail manner and that is the reason actually i started with a very simple thing and then i went on ahead so let me just uh, summarize this lectures so after i talked about some recap of the previous lecture lecture number 7 on different things mostly magic numbers then i went ahead talk about why different shapes of nano crystals are possible and to discuss that i talked about examples of fcc and fcc has three important planes 111 110 1, 1, and 10 and their relative surface energies i discussed from there i drawn the 2d surface energy landscape as a function of orientations and then i discussed with the old constructions how we can arrive at equilibrium shapes this is something which you remember always because this questions will keep on coming to mind or coming to you may be asking to the stock various instructors why this crystal have this kind of shapes this mainly because of these particular aspects so basically it tells you the surface energy to minimize minimize that is gamma ai by ai and a multiplier by gamma i should be minimized that's what it tells you so the next lecture we'll talk something else about surface energy related things mostly some fun, fundamental concepts then we we'll wind up and move ahead with thermodynamics aspects of that